Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you guys are doing well today. I want to start off today in prayer because I feel that the subject I'm going to be talking about is quite heavy. So let's go ahead and start. Lord Jesus, I pray for this time right now that you would speak through me and allow your Holy Spirit to move and pour out among the world. Lord, I pray that you open the ears and the hearts of those who might be struggling or seeking for something. I pray that they might hear this word given and they will find an eagerness in their heart for more of you. I pray that whoever hears this will seek your face and will then accept your free gift of salvation. Lord, I know that the time is short and you are coming so soon. So as you speak through me, I pray it lights a fire in the hearts of the unbeliever in order for them to hear and see what is going on all around them. I just ask that you bless this time and bless those who hear it. In your precious and holy name I pray, amen. Okay, so let's talk about um, the subject I was going to be speaking on, and that is what is going to happen um, one second after the rapture. So right now, the Holy Spirit is restraining evil. We are in the church age. Uh, the church is considered the restrainer. Um, the Holy Spirit or the restrainer enables people to understand scripture and guided believers to a closer walk with God. But once the rapture happens, it's going to change everything. The Holy Spirit will no longer restrain and God will finally give the world over to the hands of Satan, but they will be under such a strong delusion, delusion that they won't realize what's really happening. Once the restrainer is gone, or the church is gone, demon possession can begin to take over like wildfire, and only those who have eyes and ears to see will fully understand what is happening. This is why Satan, or better known as the Antichrist, will want to destroy and fully get rid of anyone who worships the true and living God. Everyone who is left behind is an unbeliever at that point, but there will be some who will understand and know the truth. Others, however, will be um, demonically directed. These people will follow the Antichrist gladly and worship him as God. They probably will exhort the characteristics of 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. In the last days, perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, dis despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. Not only will these people refuse to do what is right, they will revel in doing what is wrong, caring about nobody but themselves. Unfortunately, this is the course the world is taking now and we can see it happening every single day. The coming of the lawless one or the Antichrist is according to the work of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders and with all unrighteous, unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. The truth will be available, but the demonically directed will abhor it, refusing to hear it or believe it. Even today, it is possible to see how easily people will reject the truth. Some people left behind at the rapture will come to faith in Christ. Perhaps they will get a hold of Bibles or they will read the left behind letters that we are leaving. Or perhaps they will remember a godly parent or spouse or friend who shared the gospel with them at one time. There are so many possibilities that, that could take place. Whatever the case, these people will become believers during the tribulation. They are the duly and supernaturally delivered by God's amazing grace. Yet it will not be easy for them to follow God. Many will be martyred. Unfortunately, their heads will be chopped off for following Christ. Satan won't allow any single person to worship the God of heaven. He is so prideful that he wants everyone to worship him and him alone as God. Unfortunately, many people will worship him as God and believe the words he speaks, just as, as um, so many have done in the past. 
one second after the rapture takes place, let's think for a moment at some scenarios that can and might happen. You're on a plane that suddenly has no pilot. That plane is going down and you have a split second to decide your eternity. Or even if you're at work and see planes suddenly falling from the sky all around you, what will you do next? You're in an operation on the table, possibly wide open, and suddenly the doctor vanishes, leaving you exposed on the table. Cars without drivers causing accidents all over the world and there is no way around it as many people will be injured and die due to this. Trains will derail with, um, with no conductor, leaving many dead and many wounded. As panic sets in, you realize the baby that you were once carrying is suddenly gone, or the children that you have have vanished. Instantly, you are left wondering what is going on all around you and around the world. What, is, what in the world has caused such chaos? We see how the news media is now and how they hide information as well as lie about information in order to get the best story. So what will be their excuse for millions um, of events going on all at once? They most certainly will hide the fact that it is the rapture and push the lie about aliens or some other lie that will give them the ratings that they crave. If we look at what will happen one second after, after the rapture, we will see that the order of things that God has created will suddenly be shifted. It will no longer be to live for Christ. The Antichrist will bring peace when there is chaos and answers when there are so many looking for them. He will explain away what really happened and maybe even align himself with a new age ideas and explain away the missing people. And we already see... Um, this being conditioned today and beginning the explanation of things to come. There is a woman by the name of Barbara Max Hubbard. She believed that she had a spirit guide to tell her what was going to happen in the rapture. In fact, she wrote a book called Rapture. That spirit guide, in fact, was a demon showing her what the explanation would be for the missing people. She wrote, your unfinished unfinished species is ready to evolve the time has come on earth for this quantum change to occur in many of you her christ further informed her i cannot return until enough of you are attracted and linked together hubbard hubbard's christ explained i don't intend for you to defy me but to uh, defy yourselves as being the same stage of evolution as I am. Suffice it to say that if you do not choose to evolve with the wholesome, co-creative human, then you shall not. She goes on to say more things, but this one really stuck out. We dare not leave any self-centered soul on earth after the selection process. Who is going to be surgically removed from the earth according to her? It's the resistors the right-wing fundamentalists or the Bible believers because we would not cooperate with this leap into the new world order that they are trying to establish. So, in other words, the explanation will be that those who were not willing to evolve have been taken out of the way in order for those who are willing, who are willing and those will, will remain. There are many other New Agers who believe that they have a spirit guide telling them that the earth is about to go through a cleansing process to rid itself of those who aren't willing to cooperate with this said cleansing of nature. Andy Wood said, at some point, the body of Christ will be complete. A number will be reached and only God knows that number. And at that point, the church will be removed from the earth through the rapture. And then God can once again begin to work for the nation of Israel. Needless to say, the time for salvation is now. The chaotic events that will take place after the rapture are going to be so horrible as many people are going to die within minutes of the rapture taking place. What if it's you? Do you know where you will spend eternity? Do you really want to wait to find out what the world will be like after the rapture? I advise you, do not wait. You may not have time to accept Jesus later. 
Jesus said he comes quickly and the rapture is going to happen at the twinkling of an eye. If you do not know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior, you will be left behind. You might think that you're a good person and have done so many good things in your life, but and you might even think that because of that, you will most certainly go to heaven. You might even say, well, I was baptized and that's how I became saved. Or like most people who think that if you feel a certain way, that they must be saved because they are believing their conscience. Or even worse, that they know the Bible back and forwards and they're all around a good Christian. All of that is not going to get you to heaven and you are not going to find yourself there. You're going to find yourself left behind. You have to have a personal relationship with the one true God. He is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no way to the Father but by Him and Him alone. You can be pure as, as snow and still find yourself left behind because contrary to what others believe, all good people do not go to heaven and all bad people do not go to hell. In fact, there will be a lot of good people in hell and a lot of bad people in heaven. A lot of people don't like to hear others saying that time is short or the rapture is any moment because they want to push it out of the minds of people for fear of sounding sensational. But what if your next breath is your last? What if you walk out of your house today and something happens where you find yourself in eternity where you had wished that you had listened? What if Jesus does come back today? What will you do and what will you think? Your eternity is forever. It's not a time to play around or to continue on living the life of the world. Now is the time to get your life right and accept the gift of eternal salvation through Jesus Christ. If you would like to accept Jesus, you can pray this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask you for your forgiveness. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins and you rose again. I turn from my sins and I invite you to come into my heart and into my life. I want to trust you and follow you as my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said in John 10, 28, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them from my Father's hand. Who has given them to me is greater than all no one can snatch them from my father's hand and I, the father and I are one. You might ask, what is eternal life? The meaning of eternal life is lasting or existing forever without ending or without beginning. So when Jesus said that you will have eternal life, it means you will be secure. You will have no ending to your salvation once you have it. Praise God that he places his seal upon you and you will then be entered into the family of God. With that, I, I leave you and I hope that you have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day.